Hey, good morning, everybody. I'm Pastor Randy here with Made Free Church. Hope you guys are having a great morning. I know I am. Um, and uh, welcome to a Wednesday morning Bible study uh, here at Made Free Church. Uh, you know, whether you're joining us, you know, from Facebook or YouTube or you're tuning into our, you know, uh, Made Free Church or Tactical Bible Guide podcasting platforms, you know, I'm thrilled to have you with us today. And today we're going to end, and I know I said this the other day, but we're going to end our predestination series, right? Um, and 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 we're gonna we're gonna be talking about, um, you know, uh, the security of the shepherd. We're going to be in John chapter ten, verses twenty-seven and thirty. And uh, you know, guys, this will be the last uh, day for the predestination series, and then we're going to go back you know, to uh, second Samuel, but, you know, um, we're going to be talking about, you know, uh, I believe in the once saved, always saved, you know, and, and, and I believe that there's a lot of biblical, you know, especially through predestination and election and stuff like that, you know, and God's sovereignty. And uh, I believe that you could never lose your salvation. Oh, man, I love coffee, and, you know, and, uh, um, so I believe that, that, uh, you know, um, you know, we, we believe in a sovereign God, man, you know what I mean? And, and I believe that he's predestined us before the foundations of the world. And, uh, so, you know, guys, um, you know, and then this is what the study is about, you know, it's about that, you know, once, once, once you confess that there's a regeneration that's going on in your life, You'll produce that fruit. Yes, you'll fall, you'll sin, blatant sin, and even unknowing sin, but you're going to fall, right? And, and it's not about the flaws, it's about how you get back up. You know what I mean? Because it's like, you know, there's a lot of scriptures that talk about, you know, um, the once saved, always saved. And, and, and um, you know, and I'm a firm believer in that, you know. Um, and I, I be also believe that, you know, uh, it doesn't give you a license to sin. There has to be a transformation in that. And I think that's why we do the predestination series, the election series, the doctrine of grace series. And we're not reformed people. We just believe in these doctrines because these doctrines are biblical, you know. And uh, so um, let's, you know, let's get into prayer. You know, Heavenly Father, we just come before you, you know, um, you know, hearts filled with gratitude and anticipation. We thank you, you know, for the privilege of diving into your word and, and for the opportunity to grow in your understanding, Lord, and your truth, Lord. And, and Lord, we acknowledge you as the good shepherd, you know, the one who leads us to wisdom and grace, Lord, you know, and we want to thank you for the security and assurance that we find in you knowing that you hold us secu se uh, uh, securely, Lord, in your loving hands. And as we dive into John chapter 10, verses 27 through 30, Lord, you know, we ask for your guidance and illumination, Lord. We, we open our hearts and our minds to receive the truths that you have prepared for us. And may your spirit speak to us clearly, revealing the depths of your love and faithfulness in Scripture. Lord, we just put on the full armor of God, which it says in Ephesians 6, 10 through 20, Lord. We ask that you rebuild those hedges of protection, those shields around us today, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you send your legion of angels down to fight for us and fight with us, Lord, as we pick up the weapons of warfare. Lord, bless our hands and feet as we go about our day, Lord. And Lord, we just ask, God, that you continue to do a mighty work in us. Lord, thank you for all that you do, Lord, and, and, and uh, thank you for our salvation. And we just and thank you for the forgiveness of sin. Lord, we thank you. And thank you for the for the assurance that we can never lose our salvation. And we thank you. We love you and we worship you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. All right. Now, guys, I got a new mic, so I hope it's working out. Um, this is the first time I've used it. And uh, so... I uh, hope it's working. I hope you guys can hear me. But uh, let's dive in, you know, to John 10, 27 through 30. You know, um, um, now imagine a picturesque scene, right? A shepherd walking through the rolling hills, right? Tending his flock. Uh, 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 
and and with with with, with gentle care and unwavering devotion, right? The, the image of the shepherd and, and his sheep captures the essence of our passage today. You know, we're going to be diving into John chapter 10, verses 27 through 30. And it's a portion of scripture where Jesus, the good shepherd, speaks about his intimate relationship with his followers. You know, this passage holds, you know, uh, uh, profound truths about the relationship between Christ and those who belong to him. You know, and and and. And at its core, the central theme of this uh, of, of, of this passage is is security insurance found in Christ as our shepherd. You know, in a in a world that's filled with with uncertainty and chaos and turmoil, right? This passage offers a comforting reminder that those who belong to Jesus are securely held in His loving embrace. So as we journey through. Uh, these verses together you know we're going to explore the depth of the shepherd sheep analogy used by jesus to illustrate his relationship with his followers you know it's just as the shepherd knows his sheep and cares for them you know jesus knows each and every one of us intimately and watches over us with unparalleled love and concern you know and and, and through these passages right we're also going to uncover the beautiful truths of Christ's sheep, right? That we have a privilege of, of hearing his voice and following him. You know, uh, the world that's clamoring for our attention and allegiance, Jesus calls us to listen attentively to his voice in scripture and walk in obedience to his commands, right? But, but, but you know, the, the, I guess the, 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 the most profound aspect of John 10, 27 through 30, right? It is the assurance pr that it, it provides to believers. You know, Jesus declares that his, 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 he gives eternal life to his sheep, right? And, and, and they, they will never perish, right? Not only that, but he promises that no one can snatch them out of his hand or out of the, out of the hand of the father, right? This assurance is a source of great comfort and confidence for those who place their trust in Christ, right? You know, um, people, people, people believe, man, that you can lose your salvation and, and, and stuff like that, or you could walk away from it, you know, and, and I believe that you can walk away from Christ, right? But if you're truly saved, right? Christ is, you know, God's going to bring you back into the right relationship with him. And I, I, you guys cannot, um, you guys cannot convince me of otherwise, you know, really you, you guys can't, man, because it's the scripture is so clear on once you're saved, you're always saved. And that salvation is an eternal gift from God and you can never lose it. So, you know, as we dive into these passages, right, you know, let's open our hearts and our minds to the truth that it contains, right? Let's allow the words of Jesus to penetrate our souls and transform our lives. And, and, and let's rest in the security and assurance that can only be found in Christ, our shepherd and savior, right? So I want to welcome you guys to this journey of, of faith as we explore these passages together. Now let's let's read today's passages of John 10 uh, verses uh, 27 through 30. And it says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I will give that give eternal life to them, and they will never perish ever. Right? And no one will snatch them out of my hand. My father, who has given them to me, election right there, guys, uh, is greater than all. Right. And no one is able to snatch them out of the father's hand. I and the father are one. See, that's part of the Godhead. Right. So let's get into the contextual background of this. Right. So in order to fully grasp the significance of, of Jesus's words in this passage, it's essential to understand the context in which they were spoken. Right. That the passage is a part of a larger discourse in which Jesus identifies himself as the good shepherd who lays down his life 
for his sheep in John 10 verses 1 through 18. You know, through through vivid imagery, guys, Jesus paints a picture of a deep, intimate relationship between himself and his followers, right? Contrasting it uh, uh, with the role of, of hired hands, you know, who, who, who would abandon their flock in times of danger, right? You know, but, but, but Jesus claims to be that good shepherd, you know, where we're met with opposition it, it, and he was met with opposition from the, the religious leaders of his day, right? In John 10, 19, uh, uh, verses 19, 19 through 21. Sorry. Um, they, they questioned his authority and accused him of blasphemy, you know, and for equating himself with God. Right. And it, it's against this backdrop of contention and controversy that Jesus delivers these powerful truths that we find here in John 10, 27 through 30. Now, verse 27, right, says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Right. So this verse, Jesus highlights the intimate nature of the relationship between himself and his followers. The metaphor of the shepherd and his sheep underscores the deep personal connection that exists between Jesus and those who belong to him, right? Just as the shepherd knows each of the sheep by name and he cares for their needs, Jesus all intimately knows and cares for his father, a uh, follower, excuse me. And, and, and Jesus emphasizes the importance of recognizing and obeying his voice, right? His sheep were called to listen attentively to the voice which is scripture uh of you know that of, of of our shepherd and to follow him wholeheartedly in verse 28 it says this it says and i give them eternal life and they shall never perish neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand amen so here jesus makes the declaration uh regarding you know the the eternal security of his followers you know he promises to give them eternal life, right? A gift that cannot be earned or it, you know, or even deserved, but is freely given them through faith in him. And this assurance of eternal life brings us, you know, brings great comfort and hope to us as believers, you know, knowing that we are safe in the hands of their of our shepherd. Right? And Jesus affirms that no external force or power can separate his sheep from his loving care. That they're, they're held securely in his hands, shielded from any great or any threat of destruction or harm, right? And in verse 29, it says, you know, my father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hands. So in this verse, Jesus affirms uh, Jesus reaffirms the sovereignty and power of God the Father. You know, he emphasizes that his father has who 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 has entrusted his sheep to him is greater than all, right? And and, and this underscores the divine authority and protection that surrounds believers. Jesus Jesus reiterates and that the, the double security enjoyed by his followers, not only are they they held in his hand, but they're also held in the hand of the Father, right? This double assurance underscores the unshakable nature of a believer's salvation, guys. Right? In verse thirty, it says, "You know, I and my Father are one." Right? So, in this final verse, Jesus makes a statement about his identity and his relationship with the father by declaring I and my father are one. Like Jesus claims equality with God and the unity with the father, right? That this assertion of, of deity is central to the understanding of uh, understanding this uh, security and assurance of believers. Right. And, and as the son of God, Jesus possesses the same divine attributes and authority as the father. Therefore, 
you know, his promise of eternal life and security ca uh, carries the weight of divine certainty. Believers can rest assured that in, in, in the unchanging character of their shepherd, who is one with the father, right? So, you know, John uh, 10 verses 27 through 30 offers a rich and profound reflection on the security insurance found in Christ as our shepherd, right? And through the vivid imagery and, and powerful declaration, Jesus reveals the ultimate relationship he shares with his followers, you know, and, and, and the unshakable confidence that they can have in his care, right? And, and as we meditate on these truths, you know, we may we maybe we strengthen our faith, right? May it strengthen our faith, guys, and encourage to follow our shepherd wholeheartedly. Now, one of the, the theological implications here of John 10, 27 through 30 is the assurance of salvation that it offers to believers. Jesus unequivocally declares that he, he gives eternal life to his sheep, right? That they shall never perish. This assurance is not based on human effort or any kind of human merit, but on the unchanging promises of God. Believers can take great comfort in the, the certainty of their salvation, knowing that that it is secured by the unwavering faithfulness of their shepherd. This assurance serves as, as a source of hope and confidence, particularly for those who may struggle with doubts or fears regarding, you know, their standing before God, you know, in, in a world filled with uncertainty and insecure and insecurity and false teaching and false teachers, you know what I mean? Saying that you can lose your salvation and, and, and you don't have enough faith you know, to be healed and all these fake healing ministries, you know, stuff like that, you know, um, the promise of eternal life in Christ provides a firm foundation up, up, upon which believers can build their lives. Now, another theological implication of this passage is the role of Jesus as a good shepherd in the lives of his followers right through th through the imagery of the shepherd and his sheep jesus portrays himself as a caring and attentive leader who guides and protects his flock right believers uh are are, are called to reflect the depth of jesus love and care and, and care for them recognizing that he knows them intimately and is deeply committed to their well-being Right. So this re realization should should lead to greater reliance on Christ's leadership in every aspect of the life of a believer. You know, just as the sheep trust their shepherd to to lead them to green pastures and still waters, believers are called to entrust their lives uh, uh, to the guidance of Jesus, confident that he will lead them in the paths of righteousness now no it doesn't say you know that he's going to heal you it doesn't say that he's you know that he's going to give you millions of dollars all that faith word of faith and all that you know prosperity gospels all is all you know and and you know a huge part of the charismatic movement is a false a false doctrine and, and it is a false i mean if they have you know healing rooms uh or you know if um you know they have, you know, uh, uh, certain schools of ministry that are that are that are focused that are coming out of of Bethel Church and stuff like that. And but not all charismatics, man, are are bad people. And, and I believe that that's a lot of charismatics. They just are being led astray. You know. Now, the th and, and and I'll do a whole series on the charismatics later, but. Um, I think the third theological implication of this passage is the call to trust in the sovereignty of God, right? Jesus affirms that his father who has given his sheep to him is greater than all and no one is able to snatch it out of his hand, right? Now, now this declaration underscores the absolute authority and power of God as the father, right? Who holds 
believers securely in his loving embrace. You know, as 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 believers, we need to contemplate the reality of God's sovereignty. You know, uh, you know, we're invited, you know, to find peace and rest in knowing that nothing can separate them from the love of God. Right. This assurance enables believers to to let go of fear and anxiety, recognizing that their lives are ultimately held in the hands of a faithful and loving God who is in control of all things. You know, in a world marked with with chaos and uncertainty, the truth of God's, excuse me, I got the hiccups now. See, it always happens when I preach. The truth of God's sovereignty offers a firm foundation upon which believers can stand firm, right? So, you know, John 10 verses 27 through 30 carries theological implications for believers. You know, through the rich imagery of the powerful declarations, this passage invites believers, you know, to embrace the assurance of salvation, right? Offered in, offered in and through Christ, you know, to rely on the loving care and guidance as Jesus as their shepherd. Right. And to trust the sovereignty of God who holds them securely in his hands. And as as believers, we need to meditate on these truths. Right. And find a renewed hope, confidence and peace in the unchanging promises of their shepherd and savior, guys. You know, so I think it's very important, Lord, guys, Lord, I think it's very I'm, I'm in prayer mode all the time. So excuse me. Yeah, you know, I, I think it's it's important, you know, for us that to understand that the once saved, always saved is very, very biblical. And here you're seeing it, right? You know, I don't care what you know, I I don't debate people because I'm not a debater, but you know, I see that a lot of people are being led astray, thinking that they can lose their salvation and they cannot. Now imagine if you could lose your salvation, it's something that you know, salvation is, is an eternal gift from God, right? And let's say you lose it. Well, how are you going to lose an eternal gift from a sovereign God? You can't. It's impossible, right? And, uh, uh, you know, and, and I say that unequivocally that you cannot lose your salvation, period. And I don't care what you've been taught. You know, um, you need to get out of that mindset. So. We've explored, you know, and now let's let's talk about the application, right? So we've explored, you know, the truths, you know, of John 10, 27 through 30. You know, it's it's essential for for each of us to engage in personal reflections on our relationship with Jesus. You know, why don't you guys take a moment, right, and examine the state of your heart? Are, are you actively listening to the voice? When I say voice, I mean scripture right? Of your shepherd in your daily life. Are you reading your word daily, right? Are you listening to the word daily? You know, I, I wake up listening to the word because that there's this thing called soak scream and I put it on my TV at night and I fall asleep to it. And, and all it does is just really soothing and relaxing, you know, uh, 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 audio with scripture being constantly spoken. And then I wake up to that, you know, and, and I wake up to that. And you know what? And, and, and when I do that, you know, I get some really, 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 really good mental. I don't get good physical rest, but I get really, really good mental rest. And I do that every night. You know, sometimes I forget and then, you know, but, you know, it, it, it's like one of those things that, you know, when you do that, it's, you know, you have a bite out there. You have soak stream. You have a lot of these ones out there. I listen to soak stream because it, it goes on for eight to 10 to 12 hours. And then I wake up listening to scripture, you know, and uh, uh, this is important for every believer, guys, every believer to understand that we must be consumed with scripture. Right. So. And then I went on a tangent, you know, you know, uh, um, are there areas where you may be resistant to his guidance? Right. You know, so so, you know, uh, um, Invite the Holy Spirit to, to, to search your heart and reveal areas where you need to surrender more fully to Jesus' leadership, right? Cultivate a habit of daily intimacy with God, right? Spending time in prayer, studying his word, 
so that you may hear and follow his voice with clarity and conviction. Now, I'm not saying that God speaks audibly, right? I'm not, I don't believe that he does. I believe that he speaks audibly. If you want to hear the audible voice of God, why don't you open up your Bible and read scripture out loud? Because that's his voice to us. So when I talk about his voice ever, guys, you know, it's always about reading scripture. So believers are called to live with unwavering confidence in their identity in Christ. Regardless of the challenges or uncertainties we may face, guys, we can rest assured in the unshakable foundation of our salvation, right? You know, and let this truth anchor your soul and embolden you to live boldly for the kingdom of God. You know, step out in faith, knowing that you are beloved that you're a beloved child of God empowered by his spirit to make a difference in the world, in the world around you, right? In your home, your workplace, you know, even in your, your faith houses, you know, your churches, you know, there's a lot of people that, that need to hear and know the, the voice of God, right? You know, it, and, and, and you take risks for the sake of the gospel, knowing that your security is found in Christ alone, you know, and, and lastly, the, the, the assurance of salvation found in Christ compel you to share the good news with others, right? The security and peace that believers experience in Christ uh, are treasures meant to be shared with those who are still searching for hope and meaning, you know, be intentional about building, you know, relationships with unbelievers and sharing your faith with them, right? In a loving and 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 win some way you know look look for opportunities to share your testimony and the truths of scripture you know inviting others into in, into the same life transforming relationship with jesus that you enjoy you know and this is a call to pastors to do the same you know i i know a lot of pastors out there share the gospel right but we need to be intentional we need to be out there you know and pastors need to be out there i don't care how famous of a pastor you are i don't believe it you know and i said this before i do not believe in mega churches i don't believe mega churches should exist i don't you know most of the mega churches out there are teaching a false doctrine i'd say 90 percent of them are you know there's some mega churches out there that, that are not it's, there's 10 percent of them out there you know and, and and you know and, and and the thing is is that how can a pastor shepherd a flock when they don't know them that's why I made free church is a parachurch, right? You know, we don't have a building. We don't have all that yet. You know, we're still building upon the premises of obedience of scripture and, and, and stuff like that. And we're going through changes after changes. We're getting persecuted. We're getting talked about, you know, all this stuff. And, and, and you know what? I, and I keep moving forward because God has called me, you know, to, to share the gospel you know, and, and stuff like that. So, you know, I guess I hope you're enjoying this because, you know, it's so important that we understand our security that is found in Christ Jesus, that, that nothing, nothing can take us from it. Now, does that give you a license to sin? No, there has to be a transformation. And if there's not, then there was no true salvation in that person. And, you know, the Holy Spirit will reveal that to you. You know, I, I had to leave a job because of it, you know, um, you know, and uh, uh, you know, it's just crazy. Right. But I had to, you know, so the security and peace that believers experience, you know, in Christ are treasures meant to be shared with others who still are searching, you know, you know, be intentional with the relationships with unbelievers, you know. Look for opportunities to share your test. Your testimony is really uh, that 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 sets us apart. You know where we where we came from to where we are now. You know what has what has God done in our lives, right? And 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 and, and really, you know, inviting others into the life transforming relationship with Jesus. Right. And and engage in discipleship making by investing spiritual growth and development with fellow believers. 
offer encouragement and support. And, you know, and I, I think this, I think this, that this is lacking in the church. And I saw a meme uh, uh, yesterday that really, really, really pissed me off. And, and I made a point, you know, to rebuke in love, right? And everybody thought I was condemning. And so I'm like, so I had to, anyway, make a long story short, man, you know, it was like, uh, it, the, the meme said that if, if, if there was a room that was engulfed in flames and you had one person to save and it had, you know, that guy, I forget his name and it had Dylan Mulhaney and then he had, you know, Leah Thomas, whatever his name is, you know, and then it had Hitler and everybody, and I was looking at the feed and everybody was, was picking Hitler, you know, to save. And I'm just like, really? It really pissed me off. Not not because I'm I'm a California lefty because I'm not I'm so not, but it pissed me off that these people would pick Hitler over these people over 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 these transgender people that that are that are obviously mentally ill and haven't killed anybody, but they're picking Hitler who has killed millions of people, but they're picking him. So I I, I got on this thread, man, and I just I I you know I, I just let him have it. You know, and I was talking to this one lady and, and she was and, and her and I were were just having a, a normal discourse, you know, and, and she was offended, you know, by that that thing. And, and I don't think as Christians that we should be doing that, you know, and, and, and this is where that we fall short on a daily basis, not saying that the guy that who did it isn't saved. But when I rebuked him, you know, he didn't receive it. You know, what I mean, and, and when I asked him, I said, you know. It, it, you know, and the thing is, guys, is that our assurance has life transforming, uh, 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 you know, it, it transforms our life completely, you know, and, 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 you know, you're probably calling me, well, pastor, you're, you're being a legalist and blah, blah, blah. Well, fine. If, if, if all those people, including Hitler, right, uh, needed to be pray for it and the three people that uh they were leaving in the fire who were uh who suffer from 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 gender dysphoria which is a mental illness transgenderism guys and i'm probably going to get kicked off youtube and all the other platforms by saying this is a mental illness these people that are you know going after our kids and doing all this stuff man it's a mental illness Right. And, 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 and we need to, to treat it, you know, and, and, and share. And the only way that you could treat this and there's people detransitioning and stuff. Right. And I don't even know why I got on this, this thing, but the thing is, what I'm trying to say is, is that, you know, we have a, uh, we, we have a, a ministry, it's called tree of life, which is a, a, a mental health inter uh, uh, ministry awareness ministry that we're developing, you know, and uh, let me tell you, man, you know, uh, gender dysphoria and transgenderism is a, it's a mental illness. You know what I mean? You know, and discipleship making, that is huge in this church, right? You know, uh, we are engaged in discipleship in this church, right? You know, um, you know, and, 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 you know, accountability is, is something that is needed in the church today you know people you know keeping accountable to others you know and walking alongside on their journeys of faith so so sorry i got onto a tangent my apologies you know so the truths that we find in this in, in these passages call for practical applications in our daily lives you know may we continually examine our relationship with Jesus, listening attentively to his voice and following him wholeheartedly. You know, may, may we live in the confidence of our identity as beloved children of God, boldly advancing his skills, you know, advancing his kingdom, sorry, not skills, in every sphere of life. You know, so, you know, and, 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 and may we share the security found in Christ with others spreading the good news, right, uh, of salvation, right, and making disciples, you know, who will in turn impact the world in Christ, right? So, 
So now, you know, as we come to our conclusion of the study, let's take a moment, recap, you know, the, the main points, right, that, uh, 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 that we've explored together already, right? Now, we've, uh, we began by considering the, tr the truths embedded in the imagery of, of Jesus as a good shepherd and, and, and his followers are his beloved sheep, right? And, and through this analogy, right, Jesus reveals the intimate relationships he, the, he shares with his followers, the assurance of salvation that he offers and the unshakable security found in him and him alone, right? when and, and and then we 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 dove into the theological implications of of this passage reflecting on the assurance of salvation that it provides the role as jesus as the the, the shepherd the trustworthy you know uh, trustworthiness of god's sovereignty you know and these truths have implications in our lives you know offering comfort confidence and peace in the midst of life's uncertainties you know so i i want to issue a call to you guys right now man you know what i mean and, and, uh, um, you know, uh, 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 you know, a call to respond to the message that we've heard today, you know, for, for those who have not yet accepted Christ as their savior and shepherd, you know, I want to invite you to do so, right? Jesus stands ready to welcome you into his fold, right? And to forgive you of your sins and to, in, in, in offer you a gift of eternal life, right? And, and will you respond to his invitation today? You know, you know, placing your trust in him and committing your 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 life into following him, you know, and for those that have already belong to Christ. I want to encourage you to deepen your trust in the shepherd who cares for you so deeply, you know, in, in a world filled with distractions and challenges. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Let's let us renew our commitment to listening for his voice, following his guidance and boldly living for his kingdom. Amen. And, you know, as 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 we go, as we go out from this study, guys, you know, may we carry with us the assurance of salvation. Right. You know, uh, and the comfort you know, uh, uh, of Christ's care and the confidence of God's sovereignty, you know, may, may we be the light in the darkness, right? Pointing others to the security and hope found only in Christ Jesus, right? And, 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 and may we continue to grow, right, in our love and devotion to the shepherd who laid down his life for us. And, you know, I think the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to do something on uh, the election. I mean, I think I'm going to do something on the doctrines of grace again, because I think it's so important that we understand the doctrines of grace and the implication that it has in our lives. Right. And, and I think that that is needed after that second Samuel uh, uh, study is done, you know. So, guys, you do have a few announcements. You guys, you haven't checked out our website yet. Go to mayfreechurch.org. And now you will learn about who we are, what we believe, and the various ministries that we have, you know, like feeding and ministering to the homeless through Believers in Christ Fellowship, where we go out to the, the homeless encampments and actually, you know, bring church to the homeless and feed them, right, uh, to our, our Mary's Ranch initiative for, for women and children. There's a bunch of discipleships and recovery for for men and stuff like that but there's 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 so few for women and you know if you look out on the streets there's a lot of women on the streets that need that have kids right you know to our tree of life uh uh, uh ministry where we 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 you know we bring awareness to the mental health uh you know and and then you know it's it's all about our you know gospel gangsters you know where that's our street evangelism ministry you know so there's many ways that you know you can join us serving and sharing the love of god in addition to our website you know we do have our made free church and tactical uh, bible guide podcasting platforms and you know you can find us on apple amazon spotify iHeartRadio, and all those cool uh things right 
And by subscribing and sharing to these podcasts, you know, you help us extend our reach and impact more lives with the message of hope and redemption found in Christ. You know, and 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 let's not forget about our YouTube channel. You know, uh, by subscribing and liking and sharing these videos, you help us reach a wider audience, right? Which creates opportunities for others to encounter the uh, the encounter the power of the gospel. And in those that are interested in supporting our ministries, you know, I, I encourage you guys to go to crucifiedclothing.org, right? That's our clothing ministry, which funds all these other ministries. And we got some cool Christian gear up there. And if you guys, you know, and, and it's also, guys, if you guys do want to buy, you know, any of our clothing, you guys got to go because we haven't integrated anything yet. We're still trying to figure out how to do that. But if you guys want to buy anything, go to the Tactical Bible Guy TikTok account or look in the shop area of TikTok and just put in crucified clothing and all of our stuff will come up. Now, all proceeds of crucified clothing goes directly to fund these various ministries, including Mary's Ranch, uh, uh, Tree of Life, you know, uh, uh, the evangelism, you know, gospel gangsters you know, and, and believers in Christ fellowship and stuff like that. All the money that is, is we don't, we do not make any money. None of the pastors or elders here make any money doing what we do. Right. Also guys, um, you know, you can also support us on our Patreon channel, right? Uh, you could look for us on made free church. We're also on rumble, true social X Tumblr. And we also have a Facebook group, you know, so go check those out, support us on social media. You know, and uh, so and lastly, if you guys want to make a direct donation uh, uh, to support our work, you can do that through our donation link on our website. So if you scroll down, you'll see, you know, the, the PayPal donation link. Right. And, and please be sure to leave your email addresses, you know, so we can send you a tax deductible receipt for your your contribution. You know, and guys, I want to thank you for your continued support you know, in partnership in advancing the kingdom of God. Amen. And together we can make a difference in the lives of those in need and shine a light of Christ in the world that desperately needs it. Amen. Amen, guys. So let's, let's pray out. Heavenly Father, you know, as we close our time together, we want to thank you for the, for, for the insights and revelations that you have shared, you know, uh, through, through your word. You know, may, may the truths of John 10, 27 through 30 continue to resonate in our hearts and minds, shaping our thoughts and actions in the day ahead. You know, Lord, and, and we pray for those, you know, who have, you know, heard your invitation to salvation today, Lord. May your spirit work in their hearts or drawing them in to the life changing relationship with your son, Jesus Christ. Grant them the courage and faith to respond to your call and experiencing the transforming power of your grace. And for those who already belong to Christ, you know, we ask for deepening in our trust in you as our shepherd. Help us walk in obedience uh, to your voice, following your guidance with unwavering faith and confidence. And as we depart from this time of study, you know, may, may, may your peace go with us, sustaining us in every circumstance, you know, keep us ever mindful of your love and faithfulness and empower us to live as bold witnesses for your kingdom. In Jesus name, you know, we pray. Amen. Amen. So guys, uh, thank you for being here. This will be the end of our predestination series. We're going to go back. Um, on Friday, we're going to be going back to you know, first and second, uh, uh, second Samuel. Um, I, I hope you guys are enjoying this. I hope you guys, I hope this mic is, is better, um, uh, and stuff like that. So, uh, guys, thank you for watching go in peace and, and just, you know, shine brightly for Christ. Amen.